Hi there, I'm Das Smith and I want to talk to you about a really interesting remote viewing project I worked on recently. Now this is to do with a phenomenon and a series of videos and books called the 411 Missing. Now what this entails is stories and tales of a series of people that have gone missing in national parks throughout America. Now I wanted to focus on one case in particular because I heard the the, uh, the person that's putting out all this information, all these books and all these great videos, David Paulides, has had a spotty, to say the least, um, interest and data from remote viewers when looking at this project in the past. So I wanted to look at this as a remote viewing project to see if there was anything we could get. So what I did as part of a normal practice uh, RV target for a group of people that are just training in remote viewing, so they're not, they're not experts at this stage, I set them a, a target that I thought would be appropriate for the situation. What I did first was I, I reviewed a couple of the books, I looked at the 411 missing documentary, and I picked a case in particular. Now the case I picked was the case of a young three-year-old boy called Jared Atadero. Uh, he went missing on October the 2nd, 1999 in Colorado. Uh, his body or his, his remains were found four years later by some hikers uh, and they managed to find some items of his clothing, his shoes, if I remember correctly. They found a tooth and they found part of his skull cap. But other than that, no other details remain about what happened to this, uh, this young lad at this time. So what I did is I tasked the remote viewers to have a look at this to see what they would come up with. I think it's important to say here that my intent behind this and my belief system, just in case there is some kind of possibility that affects the remote viewing in any way. Now, yes, I had done a little bit of research on 411. I'd watched the videos available and I read a couple of books as well. I'd also read multiple news articles and... My conclusion is, I don't know what's happening there, but it does seem to be that David has uh, come across some kind of pattern. Uh, there does seem to be something mysterious and strange happening with some kind of pattern of people going missing in these locations. Now, I have no, formed no conclusion on this. I don't know what this is to date. And I've seen various different things, you know, from the extreme to, to you know, people just going missing as they do. Um, so I had no formed opinion on this target when I set this to the remote viewers. What I did is I set eight remote viewers this target uh, to try to find the events of what happened to the disappearance and the cause of death of Jared. And what we will present to you in this data is what they came back with. What I will do is we will switch to me sharing a screen in a minute so I can run you through the remote viewing data. We'll also show you some bits of video that I found on the internet to show you a little bit about the missing 411 events and about this case in general. So take a look at the data and I'll get back to you when we share a screen. I'm a Ducky mother. I was visiting my parents in uh, Ritter, Oregon, and so I said, oh, where's your brother? And he said, oh, he went around the barn. Then we went back to find him, and um, he wasn't there. According to Oregon State Police, there are 41 missing children in Oregon. It's an unknown what happened to these people. It extends far beyond just kids. Hundreds of people vanished from our national parks and forests under very unusual but very similar circumstances. In a lot of these cases, search and rescue or the volunteers searching people have already gone over certain areas, not once, not twice, but even dozens of times. And then the child is found there, maybe a year, maybe a few years later. I think that I'm actually sitting here holding my son. But this is, this is what I have left of him. We're talking about a, a very large, even worldwide collective of information here. And we turned around and here was this little toddler walking out of the fog with absolutely no clothes on at all. Well, it's, it's troubling. You know, I got members of my search and rescue movement that aren't sleeping too well. If you have areas that you don't even know there's missing people, it makes it really difficult to reinvestigate when more information comes. Some of these situations are so unusual you have to think beyond the bounds of what's normal. 
One of the reports says, well, the reason why you didn't find any DNA or blood or anything on Jared's clothing is because either he or something removed his clothing. There's just too much. There are too many questions that don't have answers. When did the FBI get involved? Um, okay. The family's been accused of, of drug use and of sleeping with certain people. Everybody thinks, well, I'll come up to a polygraph. Go ahead, go right on ahead. I have nothing to hide. You know, everybody wants an answer. Hopefully someday we'll come up with one. Does the National Park Service keep a list of missing people in their parks? Okay guys, welcome back. Right, now we're going to go for the remote viewing data and an overview for you of the case. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, so let's get back to this now. Bear with me while I share my window and share the data here for you. Right, so this is remote viewing missing 411, the missing event of Jared Atadero in Colorado, USA, October the 2nd, 1999. On October the 2nd, 1999, Jared Tatero, uh, three years old, went on a hike up the Big South Trail in Pajora Canyon, Colorado, with a group of adults and his six-year-old sister. His father, Alan, stayed at the lodge he owned and operated. Alan went to wait, take a nap and was woken up by the church group, which informed him that his son was missing. Uh, while on the trail, the adults were split between two groups. Uh, the kids were running between the two groups, playing, and that, this was the last time he was spotted. Now, there was a five-day search for Jared, and it was held by the Larimer County Sheriff's Office, but this was thwarted by a, a search-and-rescue helicopter crash on October the 5th, and snow that rolled into the Rocky Mountains later. He was believed to have been spotted by two fishermen on the trail who he approached and asked him if there were any bears nearby. The case went code for a number of years until hikers found clothing consistent with a young boy on the trail three and a half years later on June the 4th, 2003. Hairs were also found on the clothing which were not consistent with Jared's dark hair and his father identified the clothing as Jared's. Now, partial remains were also found on June the 4th, 2003. The remains were part of a skull cap and a tooth. Uh, both the remains and the clothing were found on a cliff above the trail, which was very difficult to traverse. And you, you, you can see this in the videos of the case. Uh, here on the image here is a picture of, of, of the tooth that they found. Now, Alan, his father, contests that his son's pants were inside out as if they were pulled off him when he, when he received the pictures to identify which is very, uh, very disturbing, very interesting, I'm not saying, uh, because this kind of thing probably wouldn't happen in some kind of a wild animal attack. So we're going to move to the RV data now, and this is the target I set on paper. The remote viewers didn't get to see this. All they have was this identifying number in red here, which was 10079661. My data was on data where Jared Atatero, on the Big South Trail in Colorado, USA, October 2nd, 1999 onwards. And this is what I wanted the remote viewers to look at. This was my intent and how I would assess the information afterwards. So the remote viewers to move to the optimum time and position to describe the missing events and the cause of Jeff, uh, Jared Atadero. And there's a picture of Jared there. Now, eight remote viewers participated in this project with myself as the tasker and as the project manager. So I didn't remote view, I was project managing this one. As a note here, I as the tasker had no solid opinion on this target. I had read a few articles on this, as I told you in the video. I'd seen the missing 411 documentary. I've read a couple of books. I've read some articles from all over the internet. I've followed it loosely over for a couple of years now. Um, but I don't have any solid conclusions on what's happening here. To me, it's just a mystery. And uh, it's a pattern at this stage. Um, and that's all I'll, I'll agree is there's a pattern that needs probable further investigation. Hence, this is why we want to do the remote viewing. Because David Paulides hasn't had a very good response or very good data from remote viewers in the past. Moving on. My thoughts. Now, 
on re reviewing and analyzing the RV data from the nine remote viewers, the data, in my opinion, indicates the strong possibility of a structured, advanced aerial vehicle being involved in the disappearance and death of Jared. Now, it may be some possibility that um, this is the helicopter had a crash and because the helicopter can then help in the in the case you know that further the uh the cause of death of jared because it couldn't get involved um or it could be something a little bit more sinister a little bit more unexplained that's not really fully disclosed in the rv data and it would probably need further development on that but what's clear in the rv data is that although they describe a person under duress in pain and in some cases someone dying and, and so forth uh, there is no indication anywhere in any of the remote viewing sessions that this comes from a wild animal. So my thoughts um, here, uh, in none of the nine RV sessions are there any indications of accidental death or death from a natural local life or animals. At least three of the nine sessions have injury data and feelings of death and doom in them. All the RV sessions detail an advanced man-made structure energy, light, and movement, and this all feels like it's from above. Now, many of the RV sessions mention data of vehicle, ship, boat, port, and craft, which is very interesting because the missing event location is in a national wilderness far away from this type of thing or this naturally occurring data. I also find similarities at the viewer sketches uh, the man-made structure thing that's above, very, very interesting and compelling as well, and I'll show you these very soon. So, my thoughts on this are, what were the remote viewers seeing with this aerial man-made vehicle type thing? Um, could this have been the helicopter that crashed, hindering the search, uh, and then causing a further death of Jared? That's a possibility. Or that, could this be something unexplained? That's another further possibility uh, to be determined, I think. Uh, the, the tasking for this that I wrote down asked for the cause of death and it seems to indicate an aerial object that was involved in, in, in some regard. Okay, so let's go on to some of the remote viewers data here. As you can see here, here's a connection of the sketches from the remote viewers data. You can see some big similarities here. So in this first one at the top left here, Someone's got a round object there with round bits on it and they say bubbling, smooth, thick, plasticky, thick. Then there's this other circular object down below with silvery hair uh, with a downwards kind of motion on it. If we move to the middle here at the top, uh, we have another kind of circular type object here. They wrote the word oblong, circular, round, straight, uh, black, creamy, white, semi core, granite, uh, uh, mesmerizing. Moving along again, similar kind of strange kind of circular, almost like a jetty they wrote here, AOL, like a jetty. So it's, to be honest, they, these are looking like traditional or classical UFO type shaped craft. Um, I can't get away from that fact. Um, they're not much, looking so much like a, a helicopter type craft. Saying that, you know, with this next set of sketches here with this bicycle wheel type thing and the struts in the middle that could be kind of indicators of some kind of helicopter rotor blades I you know it's very hard to tell at this stage um, and if we go down to the bottom row here there's another sketch here of a circular object next to it there seems to be something like a I don't know it looks like a hollow kind of tubular kind of like object here and then again moving across again we have a hollow tr tr tubular type object here You've got a smooth, this solid, with a smooth, solid surface. And then the bottom right hand here, we've got another sketch from someone, and they've got like this kind of object, which is like a missile in the sky, and it seems to be in a downward trajectory. So as you can see here, there's lots of different data that seems to tally, seem to be some kind of a circular, moving, man-made object, which is both mesmerizing, moving, it's metallic. Uh, as, yeah, uh, and it seems to be involved in this target, and you know, it seems to be across all the remote viewing sessions. Moving on, they did get some other data as well, which is interesting, which seemed to, to tally in, which, which, was, which was these um, almost like triangular or peach shapes as well. Like, I couldn't quite work like, out what that was. They might have been trying to symbolize that, the, that this was a location of a you know, on a hill, on a, uh, on a hill area that was going upwards. I don't know, that's hard to say. Because um, some of this data does seem to indicate um, 
kind of man-made kind of structure to it as well. So I don't know where this fits in, but it could quite possibly be that they were describing the location in some in some form. So that's it on that amount of data at the moment. Now what we'll do is I will now try to show you some of the data in a bit more detail. Um, so this is Remote Viewer M here. Uh, now their data had land, motion, uh, unknown in motion. Um, their summary indicates that a structure was involved, people were involved, someone was hurt uh, by electrical current. And they had an electrical aspect to this. Uh, their data showed ideograms of land motion and unknown motion. Now their sketches seem to indicate an electrical conducting hard edge structure. It had windows, it seemed to be above ground with a long drop to the ground. It was shiny, small and tall. It gave off a crackling energy sound, it's humming and vibrating and it felt like a static. There was also a falling and metallic sound in an isolated area. And this felt dangerous, probably electricity. So it had elements there, it almost feels UFO, kind of esoteric in nature, but it could quite possibly be indicating the, uh, the crash of the helicopter there as well. They said there's a downward motion to the structure, slowly falling like a feather left and right and downwards. And then there's an explosion of light. Again, that could be you know, a helicopter type crash or a UFO type event. This generated data for them a very fast motion. Um, what else do they report here? They report flashing lights, a cool environment. Um, they feel that there's a life there, is not aware of what's going on because they're tired. <coughs> feels like they're lifted upwards, floating in space, and they had no reaction to this. So that kind of feels a little bit like some kind of, um, if, I'm, if you know, I'm totally honest to you, some kind of UFO -y kind of adoption event. But you know, I'm, I'm postulating here. Uh, the viewer was moved to a large open flat plane. The plane was investigated further. They said it was big, it was full of unnoticed information. Uh, very powerful place, packed with information, electrical cracking sound, columns of light containing information. So this is very kind of obscure and esoteric here now. Um, yes, uh, they didn't, yeah, it was very esoteric. Uh, hard to quantify with real data on this one. But again, it seems to indicate something unexpected and very strange was happening here. Uh, they could, you know, and it is quite possible that because we're looking at a cause of death event here, um, it is very possible that this kind of uh, strange kind of interaction that they're receiving here may be uh, some kind of uh, data coming back from some kind of death passover event. I don't know. We can't, you know, we can only assume on this from the first uh, set of remote view. So a final movement command, and the, re the remote viewer here reports that there was a heavy weight that was falling down. It was bursting like a bubble, bubble when hitting the ground, deforming sliding along the ground with electrical cracklings. Um, and they feel like there's a life form that gets fried by an electrical charge and it finds themselves lying on the ground. So this kind of really does kind of um, sound like it might be uh, the helicopter crash, but that remains to be seen to be honest. So we move on to viewer R. Now there are summary details that are of a tall natural feature, uh, hard and bumpy. Uh, the location's warm and hot. Then the viewer describes a green liquid material with a chemical taste, and ejection is associated with this material, uh, a sense of excitement and doom within this target. They then have some quick sketches which do like typical UFO shapes, uh, and this viewer labels them like a jelly, and we saw that earlier. Um, then they have a mountain type structure and label it Devil's Tower. Again, that, that could be you know, the, uh, the natural formation, or it could be a reference to uh, the Devil's Tower and something like the film, like Close Encounters of Fur Kind, that's kind of hard to say at this stage. Um, they also had warnings of uncertainty, a clear present danger, and Doctor Doom warnings. Um, and then later on, they had the impressions that this was some kind of black ops exercise. So we move on to Viewer A. Now, I'm only going to use the data from Viewer A summary, as it says here, because this, the session was long and filled with noise and a slipped in structure. So the general gest thoughts at the beginning were of a man-made structure, natural structures, a biological that was in motion, so a life form, a person, there was land and there was motion. She then correctly identified the natural structures of a verse called Woody, uh, so that would be perfect for the location of this target. 
then she feels that there's some something compromised, distressed, and unexpected happening. Then she felt there there's a sound of someone screaming, a breathe, and a feeling of extreme danger, of being stranded. The target had a medical context or a context to human health and loss of life. So they felt that this person was, you know, in trouble and losing life. I felt she felt that they were bleeding from their eyes as well. Uh, they also mentioned death and dying in their remote viewing session. They also mentioned something dark and cloudy, spready, crawling through the air. And the ambience felt technical, outside, rural, um, like it happened in the middle of nowhere, which is perfect, perfect this time. But she also said it involved military and an AOL of an Area 51 feel. feels like nothing can be done about this and it's ahead of time and unexpected. So some very strange information there, uh, quite a lot of it not really uh, in line with a helicopter crash, although, you know, the military aspect could, could be part of that. Moving on, the data, data also hinted at high, tall, glassy, grey, shiny, it was suspended, noisy, loud, uh, much like the other viewers' data. She also mentions the word vehicle in this data as well, so she, she's talking about a vehicle here that's involved. Other data from this viewer included and indicated thundery noise, very noisy and explosion or explosive, which you know could be could be the uh, helicopter crash. Uh, there was also other data of mechanical, technical, a working environment at a target, and if someone someone or something was suited up and protected. Um, so some of this data seemed very kind of uh, sci-fi kind of UFO film. Some of it feels slightly military on this, so it's hard to quantify which. But clearly, this remote viewer also isn't describing some kind of um, animal attack in the wilderness. Although they do describe a life form that's you know, under duress and, and goes through a death event. So I asked them to get more data here, and I asked them if they could fill out more details on the biologicals, the feeling of someone screaming. Um, and I asked them to go back to their own data and look at the loss of life and bleeding for the eyes. And I asked them to go back and get more details on this technical aspect in this military field. Now the retest data they came back with said, sounds of multiple biologicals and a feeling of someone screaming breathe. Target feels like an event where biologicals move away from a single person or area. A feeling of getting hurt holding breath, something's in the air which is dangerous and corrosive and unstable, it's uncontainable, it feels like they're breathing shards of glass, it feels like a subject or a person is forgotten or left behind, uh, they're moved, uh, they moved away from and he's left to die. Um, she says someone looks lizardy, welted, burnt, septic and distorted, and she felt she saw this when observing the face of this life form. Now, I asked them to move to the sound of many biologicals, and they got a sense of multiples eating. They felt military, temporary, and they felt like they were dressed in silver and surgical and green. The target has a medical context or a context to human health or loss of life. There's bleeding from the eyes, and medical aspect feels like being looked at under light, light directing a solution. The whole ambience for this felt technical outside raw. As it happens in the middle of nowhere, it involves the military. Now she also says there are multiple biologicals working and they're protected and clothed in grey. They're skilled and they're processing something. Um, it's in an environment which is open, outside, messy, dusty and gravity. They're using tools which are noisy, silver, yellow, metallic, toothed, thundery, sounding and a vehicle. So again, it doesn't sound like some kind of uh, wild animal type. So moving to viewer C. They start with just thoughts of land, a man-made movement. They say the land is mineral rich, remote, raised in its green. The man-made seems to illuminate and somehow channel the sun's lighter energy. Uh, this man-made contains movement. So again, they're talking about a man-made object here. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, again, it doesn't sound like a helicopter. It sounds something a bit more esoteric. So the movement is indiscernible but quick and darting in an up-down motion. Feels like it's gliding down on drops of liquid on or steel cords. So very, very interesting kind of data there. It doesn't feel like it's um you know traditional kind of um, aerial travel as we know it. The movement is busy and also gives way and comes from something suspended. Something moves down and out of the suspended in a pouring motion. There's a feeling of a show and something magical happening here. 
The creation had been done by a high intelligence and involves both organic, natural, as well as a man-made. It feels cool with powdery metallic and ozone smells. There is a feeling of descent, of labour, and a mix of movement and suspension. So, as you can see, this kind of does feel very esoteric and very UFO-like in its description. She also said uh, there's illumination, uh, feelings of a light show, shafts of light, laser lights. Uh, a strong theme in this viewer's data is of movement and floating and being suspended. Uh, and with sketches of what looks like a life being suspended. Uh, other parts in their data are blue, illumination, a biological which is suspended and floating, frozen in time and weightless. Um, so she could be uh, talking about a death event here, you know, where a life transgresses from uh, you know, this life to the next maybe, or something a bit more esoteric. But again, it doesn't sound like the helicopter crash, and it doesn't sound like a an event involving an animal taking the life of a person. Moving on to viewer M. Uh, viewer M, feels, the target feels like uh, an open body of water with a structure in life. The water is cool, and yet I sense heat. There's a structure. It's large, winged, and chambered, and is moving. There's a lot of noise coming from a particular life. The life feels aged, rough-skinned, yet soft and speckled, and makes lots of noise. The object feels metallic and is moving and interacts with the life. Now, M also says that the, uh, there's a feeling of being hunted and sought out here with this target. Then the, the M viewer also gets details that it seems like a close family being sp split apart to obtain something. So again, very esoteric and very on target with this target, as, as we know from the history of this. Um, M like others also indicates something from above 30 to 40 feet of an energy and has AOLs, which we have a guesses in remote viewing, that indicates a boat or a craft, which again ties into collective data of some kind of UFO -y type event, but you know, has to be determined. Viewer G. Viewer G starts with data of natural, man made life, energy, and structures. And they get movement, kinetic energy, they get a life form, blue, maroon, red, bright, and it feels part outside and part inside. They go on to then record communication at a distance, which has a science and techie feel. There's an angled me metal there and there's life forms here. Uh, it's overarching, connected, and they're saying something. And there's a, there's a whirring movement that reminds them of CERN and the collision collider. There's a fast momentum forwards, there's energetics and it's dense. And it feels like someone's moving through treacle. Uh, so that's very science-based in this, in this description of what Lisa feels going on here. Now, reviewer G all, also feels that important data is sloping, slipping or sliding. Sounds like rocks moving down here, here as disturbed. And then we know that you know, the final location of Jared's body was you know, far up the hill from where he went missing from. Um, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what that feels like. So I, I retasked this remote viewer with this data, and I asked them to describe more on the life, life forms that you mentioned, describe more on the structure, machinery, technology that they mentioned, and also to look at communication at a distance that they mentioned as well. So then come back with this data. Uh, the life form is a person who's lightweight. They're hot, warm, and frustrated. They're wearing a pattern fabric, which feels like a chet pattern in its casual clothing. There's a noise like a cough, they seem to be seated and thinking about something. Um, they also then describe data that it feels like it's a male of 40 years of age and they're white. Um, obviously, you know, we're talking about a young, a very young boy here, so I don't know where that fits in. Other life are overhead in a large covered space. And they have an AOL of a hangar. A small number of life forms in a large cover technology in a connected space. They are intelligent and they know what they're doing. So I asked them to move the scientific equipment uh, and they talk about transition, connection, blue, glow, gold, glass, angled and not sure of a language. They asked themselves what is the function of this place and they record the data of energetics, penetration, connection, translation and radiation. Again, very science and techie there. So moving on to viewer J, uh, probably one of the last viewers on this now. Now their summary describes this target feels like a jellyfish or something slippery and organic. My first impression was of a cell when viewed under a microscope or jellyfish or whatever invertebrate. 
Now, when the target was viewed from the top, I could see moving organic parts or a flowing liquid from one part to another. Uh, I also noticed that this viewer's data on page two ends up with an L of, L of rocket. Um, again, so also uh, they're starting to think about some kind of aerial vehicle that's moving through the sky. Their data on page three indicates a smooth, solid surface. It's all curves with no corners, no angles, and no straight lines. And his page four data seems to sketch and describe a round circular or oblong, which he labels as organic. So it seems to be some kind of weird kind of, it seems like the, that this weird trying to describe some kind of what's maybe organic type craft that's flying up in the sky or above with a smooth, solid surface, and it's all curves and corners. Uh, no straight lines there. Moving on to the last viewer, viewer D, um, they seem to indicate a vehicle on sh uh, which they uh, class as a ship. There's also a repeated data theme from other sessions, including metallic and explosion. So this data says there's hot, round, curved, smooth, flat, and it's hidden, red, shiny thing. There's feelings of warfare and strategic. On page six of their data, they sketch the location accurately with hills, land, a wet river area below this. Their other data indicates a sudden unexpected event from the water. There are multiple life at the location. You can then go on to say there's a metallic hollow tube-like structure with ridges that appears to be involved with warfare and strategic taking over an area for strategic purposes. Other data I saw in the hearing session had fear, someone was watching, someone was nervous, it was unsuspecting, it was like a game, there was some mistrust, anger, there was machines and a government feel. Um, and he had a, uh, they had data that indicates fishing. Now I got here a note, maybe that was the two men that saw, saw the boy, you know, when he asked about the bear, I don't know. But you know, he also had shipping, ship and port, but you know, that might just be trying to indicate that this is some aerial craft, you know, spaceship type thing we don't know at this stage so that's pretty much it really on the viewers data um i'm gonna stop sharing my screen here as you can see it's very interesting um i recorded a segment of my thoughts on this which i'm going to go back to and play the video of that in a minute but as i said it's to me at this point the data is not clear um, it's clear in the way in the fact that it doesn't look like some kind of animal accidental event. It does look like some the, the actual cause of death uh, is most probably uh, because the uh, helicopter crashed and they just didn't have the facilities to then find Jared, Jared's location. Or the data does seem to indicate and lean, in my opinion, more towards some kind of esoteric type aerial craft that was involved in the disappearance and the cause of death of Jared. But I'll, I'll play my other video to give you my full uh, thoughts on this uh, and we'll take it from there. So there you have it. There's the data that we presented to you from the remote viewers. What do you think? To me, it looks like from the data that the cause of death of Jared is led by some kind of man-made vehicle or structure that's in, in the sky or uh, moving from the sky above uh, the location. It seems definite that this is some kind of flying vehicle. Now, what kind of flying vehicle could that be, of course? Um, we have two scenarios, really, I think. Uh, I think that it's very possible that the remote viewers might have been describing the helicopter crash of the search and rescue team that happened. and. The fact that that search and rescue helicopter crashed, meaning that they didn't find Jared when they wanted to, might have been a contribution to the death of Jared himself. So it might have been what the remote viewing process found to be the cause of Jared's dying. The second possibility is some kind of strange, unknown, mysterious, craft that seems to be uh, flying through the skies that had some kind of influence or some kind of effect in the disappearance and death of Jared. Um, that cannot be discounted at this stage as well. Some of the data does lead to something a bit more esoteric in nature. Um, it's not for me to decide on this. All I can do is present the data on this. It's clear from the remote viewing data that the remote viewers are not describing some kind of wild animal attack. 
there does seem to be some kind of man-made structure above most probably flying uh, in in the skies that contributes to to this event and and to the death of Jared. So have a look at the data, uh, see what you think yourself. As I said, I can't come to a conclusion on this. I don't know at this stage. It's probably one of these projects that could benefit from a second viewing or from looking to, for two or three more different uh, missing 411 events to see if the data tallies across three or four different events in different locations. But I hope you find the information interesting and thank you for watching.